I just thought we'd do a little bit of a video of uh, my hangar. Uh, the last video was of me leaving the crappy old hangar that I had and coming here to the new hangar. And uh, I didn't get a chance to video the new hangar. Well, four months later, now I finally got the opportunity to do it. So with this uh, bug going on and everybody's being locked in a home and work being slow and there's nobody out here to worry about being around, as you can see, there is uh, hardly any life out here. So I'm going to, uh, it's safe to say I'm safe out here. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, I might even go fly. I did some flying yesterday and I actually might go fly a little bit here today because it's a beautiful day to do it. Um, I haven't decided yet, but I just thought I'd do a video of my hangar and the airplane. And the hangar, of course, we're using the hangar for more things than just, um, as you can see, more than just uh, the uh, airplane. But actually, the plane's in great shape. It's a 1966 Cessna 150, which the plane's, you know, 50 years old. But you can't tell by looking at it. The engine has just been rebuilt and uh, the plane's in a, you know, pretty much in immaculate shape. Um, I'm gonna pull it out of the hangar. The lighting's kind of hard to do some of this with um, being outside, the shade, the sun, glare. But you know, I'm doing it for the fun of it. This pole here, this is what I used to drag it around with when I'm pulling it out of the hangar and stuff. I just leave it on there for now and I'll take it off of when I fly it and stuff. But I just thought it'd be a good time just to go over some things of the airplane. A lot of people don't know much about them, but anyways, this here is a, uh, what's called a pitot tube. This right here, um, when it goes through the air, when the air goes into here, and uh, moves the speedometer in there so I know how fast I'm going. Flying an airplane, uh, speed is everything. What you're doing to your speed has to do with everything you're doing. Here's my landing light and my taxi light. Run those at night. I haven't flown this plane at night yet, but I will. And then over here is my navigation lights. Red on this side, blue on that. Ailerons, this is what makes plane turn. Drops this wing, lifts the wing. Then it flaps. These are my GPS antennas to receive GPS signals. I got two GPS receivers in there, so I got two separate antennas. This antenna here is my uh, it's emergency beacon. If I crash, the impact will set off this beep, 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 so they can find me. Uh, the tail, the elevator, this is what makes the plane go up and down. The rudder, that's what helps turn the airplane. Elevator on the other side. This little piece here is the trim. This, uh, so when you're flying along, if the plane wants to come down, you have to hold it in one position, you can trim it so you can let go and fly pretty much hand free my identification number same thing on this wing here the ailerons and the and the uh, flap and then here's the blue light navigation light that's pretty much the outside of it here the prop okay let's take a look inside I'm going to do a video sooner or later as I'm flying it. But I haven't really done too much flying here this winter. Okay, my instruments. This here is my airspeed. This is mile an hour on the outside and uh, knots on the inside. I just use the mile an hour. Um, that tube outside, the air goes inside the tube as I'm flying along. And the faster I go, the more air goes in the tube, which pushes this up gives me my speed 
The different colors has different meanings by how fast. The white, that means I can drop flaps as long as I'm in the white. Here's my maneuvering speed. This is where, you know, you gotta, it's kinda, you gotta be careful when you're up here in this speed. This plane doesn't go that fast, it's slow speed. And the never exceed speed is the red line. This here is the altitude. Now this works off of barometric pressure. You read about the barometer is outside, and then you set the barometer in this window here, like 30.32, and then, uh, or the barometer is, and you set it to that, and this will set my altitude. Now, because when you climb and you get higher in the air, the um, barometric pressure uh, decreases. So the higher you go, the pressure drops, which raises this up. That's how that works. So you adjust it to whatever the pressure is outside, the barometric pressure, and sets air, because the barometric pressure outside goes up and down all the time. So, and you get it off the radio, and you get what the, uh, the barometer reads, and put it in there, and that's how you do your, uh, this. And this right here is at sea level. Right here, where I'm at here, I'm 600 feet above sea level. So everybody sets their airplanes at sea level. If you go by ground level, the ground's not level. It's up and down, up and down, up and down. So then everybody would have different readings. This instrument here, this is a turn coordinator. Okay, as I turn, this will tell me how what degree of bank, how much I, my wings are. And this ball here will go side to side if I'm not coordinated. If I'm flying and I turn kind of straight like that, the ball stay in the middle, but if I'm kind of like turning sideways or if my tail's going too much, put too much rudder in, this ball will slide to side. That way, you know, it makes it so you stay coordinated. All right. This here is, well, why do they know it's a clock? I think you understand what that is. This here is my intercom. Squelch in the volume. This is for, because we wear headsets. This is my attitude. And this doesn't determine if I'm in a good mood or not. This is just an instrument that tells me if I'm level or climbing or descending. And it's operated off a of vacuum. Of course, the engine not running. It's not really doing anything right now. So that's why it's in that predicament because the engine's not running. There's no vacuum. Down here is my heading indicator. I set that because it's a gyro inside. So that always turns to let me know, you know, it turns, when I turn, it'll turn like this. I set it to the compass, which is here. And then when I turn, it turns. So every once in a while, I gotta look at the compass and because it's gyros, it'll, it'll change a little bit after time. This here is my vertical airspeed. If I'm climbing, this will tell me how many feet per minute, or if I'm descending, how many feet per minute. A very useful instrument. Okay, down here across the bottom, this is kind of hard to do. Here's my carburetor heat. Um, as you're flying along, the air coming into the carburetor, if it, since it goes with maturity, it can drop temperature enough to where that you can freeze your carburetor off. So this, uh, is what they call carburetor heat. You pull this out and that puts warm air into the carburetor so it doesn't ice up. There's certain times you use it and so on and so forth. Here's my throttle. It's the go and pull back, push in, go, pull out, whoa. This right here is my fuel and air fuel mixture. So right now it's all the way out for lean. That's how you shut the engine off, you shut the gas off. This is the primer here that helps you start. This here is the flap switch. Flaps are on the wings to give you lift and slow down and drag. Emergency brake switch. Cigarette lighter with USB ports and it reads my voltage when I got the plane on. See, I can read the volts there, what the battery is. And that's my GPS. Um, this is just a navigation. Uh, very, very nice GPS. And uh, I, uh, I like this GPS. And um, it, you know, basically, I can put in an area to go and it'll show me on a map. There are many different types of maps of what kind you can use. Okay, some of them has just a red line, tells you what direction to go. There's another screen where it's got an arc 
like this, kind of like a compass, like you'd see, and it has a line where you should be, so you turn to where that is. It's really nice. Here's the radio. Now this is basically um, a, a radio and GPS together. Um, I don't want to turn it run on battery down, so I don't really want to turn it on right now, but I'll do another video when I'm actually flying, if I can do it and talk and fly and hold the camera all at the same time. This um, radio here is a Garmin. Of course, it has the radios. It has two frequencies, or two where I can stand by and listen, sweat back and forth. And it also has a GPS in it, too, and give me waypoints and, and anti-lose where you don't get lost with this. This is another one, too. I use this one more than this one because I really haven't played with this yet. But here's my transponder. What this transponder does is I... Um, if I'm talking to air traffic control, they'll give me a code to put in here. 1200 means I'm VFR, means I'm visual flight rules. I'm just, I'm flying, I'm watching where I'm going. But if they're tracking me or if I want flight following to where they can, you know, tell me if other airplanes are in the area, um, they'll give me a code to put in here. And then it blops up on their radar with my name on it so they know who I am on their radar. Okay, over here we got, here's the start button to start the engine. The ignition switch with both magnetos. The engine's got two magnetos on it. Kind of go long detail to get into. Master power switch. This is the in-cab heat right here. This is the navigation, or the lights that I showed you, the landing lights, the two lights that were side by side. The breaker for the beacon in the back. Here's the navigation lights. And this here is a break for a pedo heat, but mine doesn't have a pedo heat, that's so why it says no pedo heat. And then my instruments, my fuel gauges. Oil temperature here doesn't work. This one doesn't work. So we added this one. So I got an additional oil my, for oil temperature and my oil pressure gauge. And here's my tack and then uh, my hub on it. How many hours the engines ran. Okay, this has got 587 hours on it which is relatively low. It's actually got less than that had been rebuilt because I had that incident with a deer. This is what we use this a lot to determine how much power we're producing so we know what to do as we're flying. This in here is the suction. This is a, a vacuum gauge that controls the other instruments that I showed earlier. And then my uh, oil temperature we talked about. And here's all the fuses and there's the glove box that you can put papers and stuff in. This here is my trim handle that I showed you back on the back of the wing. This is what I used to, to take the pressure off the yoke. This is the, I can manually turn on that beacon, that emergency beacon that I showed you back there. This is for the inner, my screen shut off. Here's for where we plug in our headsets. Rudder pedals and the brakes. Rudder pedals is what, you move back and forth, moves the rudder and you push on the top is the brakes. And um showed you here was the compass. There's just a mirror. I don't know really why they put a mirror. They did a lot in the 150s. It's not like you can see airplanes behind you. I mean, I guess maybe with your taxi in or going to ready to take off. I'm not too sure why they put this here. I don't think I've ever looked at it. You know. Outside air temperature. So you can see what the temperature is outside at the time. It's reading 50 degrees, a little over 50 degrees. And you pull it out for an in cab vent. Seat belt, shoulder harnesses, seats. Here's a fuel selector valve down here. Right here. This is the turn the gas on or off. But that's uh, that's basically it. I'll do another. I'll do another video in flight someday to where. I'm flying around. I'm probably have to do it because I got somebody in here in playing with me so I can fly and with all the instruments working and show how they go. But I just thought I'd do a fun little video with my hangar and uh, my airplane. And uh, that was fun. So, again, here's another big sweep of my hangar. I need to clean up a little bit. It's been sitting for winter. 
the half wall. This is something I'm not a big fan of, but see, that's, that's another airplane on another hangar over there. But the door shuts, it locks. So, you know, people leave things alone. But that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I'll uh, put some more videos up later. Y'all have a good day.